All right, so we're going to do the uh, compositing part of this now. So after your stuff is all rendered out, um, or even before it's even rendered out, you can do the compositing part because um, that way you make sure that everything's working before you do any of your other stuff. Okay, so <clears throat> the first thing I have here is I have my image, and it has um, ambient occlusion. It has camera Z depth. If you look at my red value, you can see that there's some Z depth. My custom color here, my custom color there, my incandescence passes, and that's it. Okay. So what I need to do is uh, I'll put this together, and I'm just going to copy this node and swap it over here so you can see the process uh, step by step. Okay. So the first thing I need to do is shuffle out my AO, and this is going to be something that you know we're just going to commonly do is just shuffle out that AO, and then obviously we're just going to merge it back in just like we've done before and we set it to multiply set our shuffle to AO it's a good habit to get into to start naming your stuff uh, AO merge okay so now let's take a look at that so you can see the before you can see the after okay now in this one I did do a grade uh, because I wanted to just add a little bit more definition to it so you can do that too. If I look at my AO right now, <clears throat> these gray areas, you know, maybe I want those a little bit darker. Um, so I could add a grade to this by hitting G. Uh, and then I can use my gain to adjust it, or I can use my gamma to adjust it. Uh, when I used gain, it was actually grabbing the whites too, and I want to touch that. So the gamma, you can see, is just going to touch the uh, dark values. So now when I look at this, you can see that's a lot darker in there. I'll disable the gain, the grade. You can see the before and after results. Okay. So again, it's just something that's going to be um, something we always want to be able to do. Keep our uh, con keep control over this entire setup. You know, all the way down to these little ambient occlusion type things. All right. So that's good there. I can always come back and adjust it. And then what I'm doing is I'm uh, bringing my nodes in. Right now this copy and this copy are simply um, there just as extra things, uh, just as extra uh, layers basically that we can adjust. Um, if I go here, you'll see that I have my custom color here and I have my custom color there. Uh, but what I want to do is just copy those in as a separate channel altogether. <clears throat> okay, so I'm going to uh, shuffle out that. Now as we start getting you know more complex with this uh, we just gotta make sure we're keeping our stuff organized. Okay so just use the control key to add some dot nodes. Alright there we go. So this shuffle here is going to be my custom color uh, right there. Okay and let's call this, um, let's see which one this is. This is the lens. Lens shuffle. All right, and I'm going to copy back in. So I hit K for copy. Drag the B to my multiply. There we go. And I'm just copying the alpha channel into a new channel. Way on the bottom it says new. And I'm going to call this uh, lens dot mask. Okay, so I have a lens dot mask right here. You can call it lens dot whatever. I just like you know give it a name. Lens dot mask, lens dot shape. It needs the dot <clears throat> in there. So now if I come here and I go up to my channels and I go to lens, you can see I have one um, item right there. Bam, there it is. Okay, and and obviously this makes more sense too because we know that the lens is the lens. Uh, where here. Uh, we're looking at this and it's just called custom color. Okay. So let's shuffle out the other one. Okay. Copy it back in. And we're going to <clears throat> go to the shuffle for that and shuffle out the second color. It should be the bulb. And we'll call this one uh, 
called copy. And we'll say we're going to take the alpha, and copy it to a new uh, channel called bulb.mask. Okay, so now that we have uh, bulb mask and lens mask, now we could add a grade in here and I could change um, the colors. Let's say I do you know something weird, but then I can go down to the, lit, the uh, mask here and just say I want that only to affect the bulb. So now my changes are only affecting that bulb. Okay, and that's the point of this is that we want to be able to control these things individually. There we go, good. Okay. So before and after, it's only a slight difference uh, in that, even though the dials are you know pretty crazy, uh, it looks good. All right, so I'm gonna add another grade. <clears throat> My last grade, I'm just gonna rename real quick to bulb uh, grade, and then this one, we'll call this lens grade. And again, we'll make sure we come down to the mask, pick lens. There we go. Now I'm just pulling that up, and you can see how it makes a huge difference in what that lens looks like. Okay, gives a little more glassy look to it. Now, if I wanted these two colors to match a little bit better, because this blue here doesn't really match that blue, um, I could go through and start to turn the red and green off and just adjust the blue, and I could play with that to get that color to be a bit closer okay or I could turn or sorry add another uh, grade Oops. change my mask to the lens and then just adjust you know just the other colors here uh, or let me delete that mask I could add what's called a hue uh, correct or a hue shift even there's still a mask feature. There's a lot of mask features in here that you can utilize and adjust. So, oops, wrong one. Hue rotation. There you go. So you can see I add a little, a little hue rotation, and I'm pretty much at the same color tying those things together. Maybe I'll take my saturation you know, down a touch. There we go. So there's the... To say both of those, there's the before. Here's the after. You can see how it adds a little bit more... Um, tying in together of those two items. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to add a glow. Oops. G -L -O okay. And the glow on here, um, I want to be under the width channel. I'm going to pick bulb. Okay. And this is going to be the glowing of that. Okay. So I can just adjust what I want that to look like. If I adjust the tolerance, it'll actually use some of the coloration there to um, be a little more picky about what's glowing. Like the darker areas will glow less. Okay, so this one will be the bulb glow. <clears throat> and I can add another glow. Change the width channel to the lens. Go. Lens glow. The biggest thing with anything you're doing inside new is just to get like the layout down. Okay, once you have the layout down, then you can come back and start tweaking all these things as long as you know where you're supposed to be tweaking things. Um, if I know I want to adjust the color of the lens, I can go to the lens grade or the hue shift. Lens hue shift. Um, and then I can adjust the coloration there, okay? All right. So now I'm going to add a, a Z to focus. And with this, remember, we just move the focal point to where we're at. Make sure we choose our camera Z depth pass. Come on. There we go. And then we want to adjust our depth of field, obviously, just like we've done before. We want to adjust the blurring. I don't want this to be too blurry um, because I'm going to have little callouts in here. Okay, and the callouts are optional. Um, it just looks nice. It makes the piece feel more complete. 
Okay. Uh, it's subtle. You know, I could crank this up just so you guys can see it better in the video. Uh, I also want to change my math here to direct. There we go. Gives you a better result. Okay. So here is my um, focal point set up here. Um, <clears throat> anytime we have something animated, we want to set a key on the focus plane. And then go back, let's say, 25 frames. And then readjust that focus point. Go back another 25 frames or so. Okay. You have to be very uh, careful with this because you don't want to have too many keyframes that it starts to look jittery. Especially with a piece like this where it's just meant to be like an actual uh, camera in the scene and not necessarily the CG camera. There we go. And like I said, I'm going to take that blurred down a bit. I just don't want it to be too uh, out of focus. Because when I do the call outs, it's going to look really fake. All right. So I'm just skipping around just to make sure everything looks good. Yeah, I think it does. Cool. Alright, so there's our Z to focus. Now I do have some other stuff over here. I have this light wrap. And what the light wrap does is, um, let me just double click this. Um, generate wrap only is it creates these little <clears throat> highlighted areas inside here, okay? So let me show you how this uh, light wrap is set up. You have to use it. Um, it just can give you a neat effect. I'll take my light wrap from here. And the B for this was back there, yes. Okay, so the A is your foreground, and then the B is your background. So I'm going to say generate wrap only. That way you can see what it's doing. And I can take my intensity up. There we go. Um, I can adjust the diffuse. So you can see how I can sharpen it or kind of uh, blur it a bit. I also have a final gather or a foreground blur. And then I have a background blur. Okay. There's also saturation. Um, typically, you don't want this to be too crazy. I actually liked it to be a little bit tighter. And let's see, I can adjust my tolerance, and you can see how it's kind of isolating certain areas. All right, so something like that um, is typically what I would want to have set up. Um, yeah. And then I can take this generate wrap off. And then what I get are these nice little highlights inside here. And it's going to be a subtle effect. Um, so you really have to turn it off, turn it back on to see it. Let me take the intensity up a bit. You can see it better. There you go. So you get these little soft areas right here. Pull that diffuse down. Too too sharp or too uh, soft. You see how we get these little like glinty areas, uh, which turn out looking really nice. Okay, and of course you can knock this down. Oops. Uh, intensity, there we go. Okay, and crank that up. Adjust the diffuse or whatever. Okay, so I like the way that this light wrap does um, this little effect where we get these little highlights, you know, right around here. Uh, it really it makes it look, pop a little bit more, which is uh, awesome. Okay, cool. So our A was the final result, and then the B was this stuff before we've done any adjustments to it, really. We have the AO, but that's it. <clears throat> and sometimes you can just do the generate wrap, and you can use this for other stuff, too. Like, I could take this generate wrap, and I could merge that back in. This is what it's doing anyway. It's just merging it back in with the plus. And you see we get the same results, okay? Uh, but here I get a little bit more control over, you know, this mix here. I could also add a mask, you know, if it was coming off or whatever. Um, turn that off. There we go. Okay, so I have that. Um, 
I have some other stuff going on down here, but that's you know, pretty much it for that. Uh, and then the last part of this is just our uh, vignette. So I'm going to do a merge. Same way we've done vignettes before. A is going to be here. Let's pull it off. B is going to be here. We'll set this to multiply. And then we'll add our roto off to the side and pipe it in. And then we'll just draw our shape. Okay, you notice I haven't done any of the callouts. That's all going to be done inside of After Effects. Now it could be done inside of Nuke, um, but it's actually a little bit quicker um, when we're only doing one shot to do it inside of After Effects. Alright, so there's that. And then let's reverse this. And obviously we're a little bit uh, if you look at it, <clears throat> you can see these lines. It looks like a an X, basically, on our piece. Um, I'm going to take this feather fall off. And this feathering, I'll pull it up a bit. Okay, here we go. That's, that's good. Okay, so then what we do at this point is I'll write this out. And I would call this from new instructional dot pound 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 dot tiff save and then render and then take it over into After Effects. Okay. Now, just so you can see what this other part is, what I've done is I've used my um, depth channel here. Um, My light wrap is still set to generate wrap only. There we go. Okay. Um, I've <clears throat> copied my Z depth back into this, into a separate channel, and I've removed um, everything except for my RGB and my Z depth. I've set it to blur the Z depth a little bit. And then what I've done is I've generated these um, stereoscopic things. This is called uh, One View. So if I hit S in my background, uh, go to views and hit setup for stereo it creates a left and right view and then I go over here to where this eye is and I do this split join just click off everything split and join you see how we get this one view here one view there and then for each one of these I added um, an eye distort There we go. And then there's a join views here that puts it all together. Okay. So I've added that. This I to start here, um, its UV scale is set to 0 0.02. Its UV channel is set to depth. Okay. That's the only options I changed on here. For the other one, this one's set to depth and negative 0 0.02. Now when I join these together, what I actually get is... A left and right view and it's kind of subtle okay you see how it's offset a bit and then I can put this into an anaglyph and I would actually get like a um, a 3d image which is kind of neat okay uh, without rendering out two separate cameras two separate cameras is the best way to do it but when you don't have that you just have the depth you can kind of fake it okay so that's what all this other stuff is we don't have to do that for this one this one we're sticking with right to here. Okay, so that would be the assignment. Just going into nuke, laying out the stuff. You know, that's the extra points uh, for the movie, making sure it's nice and neat. You have your glows. Uh, you could add some other stuff too inside here if you want to add like smoke or something coming out, um, like in the example. Okay, so uh, this is the nuke part. So uh, I'm going to just save my nuke part and close this. And I'm going to open up After Effects. And I'm also going to open up Maya. Alright, so I've now imported my footage uh, from Nuke. Just double clicking, finding the footage. There it is. I'm going to drop it onto the New Comp button. 
And as I hit play, there it is. Okay, so this is what we got out of Nuke. Now, let's say we wanted to add <clears throat> a piece of text to this. Okay, so I went up to Layer, New Text, there it is. And then this is it. Okay, and I said, cool, I want this text to be right there, you know, above my footage. Now, as this plays, you'll see the text is not moving at all. Okay, so obviously we want that to move. We want it to match the camera and the angles and all this other stuff. Well, we have to do a little bit more work in order for that to happen. And this is it's a bit of a tricky thing to do, but it's very, very cool in how it um, is set up. So we have to go to Maya first. And what I've done is I've opened up my original scene here. So this is my uh, last one. I believe that's the last one. Here it is, yes. And I'm going to go to a different camera. And I'm going to create a locator. And I'm going to put the locator where I want something to be happening at. So I know that like for my um, lens cap here, I want a little call out by the lens cap. Okay. So I'm going to put a locator here. <clears throat> and I'm going to call this null underscore one. Okay, all lowercase null underscore one. I'm going to duplicate it, automatically names it to null underscore two. I'm going to scoot it down to this spot. Maybe I'll pull it up a little bit. That's good. I'll duplicate it. Pull it down here. I have one for the light bulb. Okay, so this is all the stuff where I'd want to maybe have a little call out. And if I'm not sure, there's no harm in doing this, you know, just adding another one. Um, it doesn't hurt. Switch, maybe I'll have one for that. Have one for this. And that. Okay. So now I have several different nulls inside here. Null one, two, three, four, five, six. And they're all in places where I would want to add some sort of call out or something inside my scene. Now the camera that I'm animating through it's not this one. There you go, it's perspective one. So then I want to go through and I want to delete everything else in my scene besides my camera and my nulls. Okay, now on my camera, uh, I want to do what's called baking. So I want to take this animation and I want to bake the animation uh, for every single frame. So I have the camera selected by clicking here. I'm going to go to edit, keys, bake simulation. And I'm going to say do all keyable and time slider is good and bake. And so what it does is it goes through and sets a keyframe for every single um, movement of the camera. Okay. So then what I'm going to do is save this as. Make sure you don't save because it will write your scene. Save as. I'm going to call it um, cam out. And I'm going to make sure it's an ASCII, a Maya ASCII file, and then save as. Okay. So then I go back to After Effects, and I double click. And in my Scenes folder, that's where I saved it, here is my... Um, there it is, Cam Out. Okay, so I'm going to double click. So then consistent number of keyframes for my camera. Okay. Um, now we'll see, now there's no locators in this one for some reason they didn't come over. Um, but we'll see that we have our uh, camera is animated. Or it should have been animated, but it's not. Alright, let's go see why it didn't work. I'm going to open up the one that did work. Oh. Uh, it didn't like the fact that I had keyframes on the other stuff, so let me just delete any keyframes I would have on all this other stuff here, like that. Also going into the graph editor, and just verifying that we have nothing before frame 1, and it doesn't like that either, okay? So I've deleted any keyframes that would happen before frame 1, okay? Or even uh, after 180, I made sure it was gone from there too. 
right? So here's the same setup, just deleting those extra keyframes from here. And then I'll bring that other one in. There we go. And this is what we should get, is we should get the camera, and we should get these solids that have all these null shapes. Okay, so now if I double click this, uh, you'll see that we get this comp that looks you know kind of weird. Uh, we have to just still do some adjustments in order for this to kind of match up. So I'm gonna grab all these nulls, I'm gonna set a key, or sorry, hit S, not setting a key, uh, and I'm just gonna scale these guys down to I believe it's 0.8 percent, okay? And then what we can see is here are all of those um, locators that we set up in the other file, okay? Now this isn't going to be matching perfect. If we look at this, this is 720 by 486, uh, which is obviously not in the same format that our other stuff was in. Uh, this is just kind of like a default as to how it brings it in. Uh, for the most part, this is going to work, uh, but it's going to be need a little bit of adjustment. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, take my stuff here. Let me just delete that. This is it. I'm going to take my lightsaber cam and my uh, from nuke footage and just drop it into this comp. Okay, you'll see that this is a bit bigger than that. Okay, right there at the end. And you can see where the locators are at and I can watch them and see how they're following. And right now they really don't look like they're following it correctly because this one is rendered at 960 by 540. And this shot cam is being read um, at 720 by 486. So if I took this one and scaled it down, okay, you see we're still not right there. It really wants to be kind of like squished. We're not going to squish it, just so you can see what it wants to do. It wants to squish and it matches a bit better okay so we're not going to do that obviously we don't want to squish our footage um, so what we can do is we can use this as basically a guide all right so it gets us in roughly the the right spot it's just not perfectly set up okay so let's change our comp settings here because we want this to be 960 by 540 our frame rate is 24 okay All right, and then what we're going to do is um, scoot this up a bit. I'm going to create a piece of text. Okay, so just like we did before, oops. layer new text, and I'm just going to call this test. And I'm going to go to one of my null shapes here. Let's say this one. I want to grab that one that's on top here. There we go. Okay, I'm going to hit P. And then I can copy these positions just by using Control P. And I'm going to paste them here. Now I need this to be a 3D layer. So I click 3D layer. And then I can paste the positions. And what you'll see is now that piece of text is going to be moving with the camera. Okay. Now it's obviously too big, so I'm going to scale it down. It obviously needs to be rotated, so I hit R for rotate. And I rotate it. Okay. Uh, another important thing to note is uh, if you look at the comp here, this comp setting is set to 24 frames per second, and this comp setting is set to 30. So obviously we need to make sure that those two things will match up. So uh, I'm going to right click on my footage here, go to interpret footage main and set that to 24, uh, which is what I intended that to be. Then I can drop this onto my new comp. There it is. I can drop um, this camera into here. Oops, sorry, not drop that camera into there. Uh, double click the camera. Here's all my stuff. And I can just copy all this stuff. If I just hit Control A, Control C, 
After Effects is going to think. There we go. Uh, I'm going to paste it into here. And then if I take my nulls and I scale them down to 0.8, there we go. Um, then we look at this. You'll see that everything's going to match up um, just a lot nicer than otherwise. Okay, the two comp settings are different. Um, it's not going to line up correctly. All right. Now this will get you part of the way. It doesn't get you all the way. Um, so there is still going to be some adjustment afterwards to get your stuff to line up. Um, but at least it'll get you that far. Let me go to my other comp that I have for this. And with this one, um, I've done just like I said before. I have my lightsaber textures cam, which is um, this camera I drop down here. I drop my other comp into this as well. Okay, and then here's all those nulls, just like we had before. Now the next part, all of these little callouts um, are just different compositions that I created. Okay, so let me make a new composition. 960 by 540, good. I just went in with shape layers and I just built something. So I'm just going to build something very, very quick for this. Okay. Uh, no stroke on these. Zero. That was already set to zero. Oh, there we go. Okay. It was setting it. So it was an update. All right. So there's you know something very very basic. Add text to this. Okay. Make it look like you know. You can look at the ones that I have here. Um, they're pretty fancy looking. Okay, I spent some time on them. This is just a very quick one, just to kind of get you the idea. But ideally, you'd want to create your own uh, setup. Okay, so once you have this kind of thing here, I also added a little um, shape like this, and then I rotated it. Our area. Like that. So I started off with this one cop that just had this kind of thing in here. I, <coughs> excuse me. If I go to this, um, there it is. Here's where I created this stuff. So this is what mine looks like. Just regular. It's just gray box. It's got the text in here, the little line, like I said. Um, and then it has this little grid underneath. And the grid is just an effect. There's a grid effect. I added that. And I also added a four color gradient to it just to give it a little bit of coloration. Um, it's a subtle thing, but it's there. Okay. So I have that um, just like I created in the other one, just like I created in this one, but obviously the other one's a bit fancier. And then I. <clears throat> And drop that into a new comp. So this lens comp edit, which is right here, I drug that to a new composition, and that gave me this one. Okay. And then what I did is I created a new solid, just a new, a brand new uh, layer, new solid, and I set that up to be a alpha mat with that new solid. Okay. If you're not familiar with an alpha mat, what it's going to do is uh, as that solid here is now animated coming up you can see how it's displaying there okay if I turn this solid on and I give it a different color so you can see it you 
you can see how this red solid is just animated to do this. And because it's animated to do that, and it's set up with this alpha mat, it's just revealing that basically. Okay? And I have it set up so that it comes in and shows the little line, then goes across, and then comes up. Okay? So now I have this set up here. And then I could take that and drop it into one of my nulls. So let's say, um, let's say this null I wanted to be lined up with. So I could drop it in here and then copy and paste the position. I could also click on the null, hold down Alt, and drag this comp onto that null and it'll replace it uh, just like so. Okay. I may need to obviously rotate it. Uh, and pull the opacity up. There we go. Uh, orientation. There we go. Okay. It might be a little bit small. Always make it a bit bigger. I can also go in with the position and just reposition this. If I'm not 100% satisfied with where it's located. Okay, it looks like it's too far back, so let me just scoot it forward, scoot it down. And scale it a touch. After Effects is very touchy with its controls. There you go, it's good enough. Okay, so you can see how it's kind of almost there. I gotta tweak it a bit more to get it perfectly lined up. Uh, and then what I did is I added an effect to it. So let me go down to my effect here. Uh, that's my there they are. All right, so I just it's just a glow really is all I added. So I can just copy this glow. paste it on there and there it is okay and the glow is just set to um, use the color channels that's what it's doing the radius is set to 40 okay and again this is not something that uh, was dropped on I played with it until I got it to look the way I wanted it to look okay it's set to on top uh, not behind because then it does that uh, it's set to A and B colors meaning I come down here to my There, my color A and color B, and I chose those two colors, and there we go. Okay, and then I could render that out, and it works, you know, pretty decently. It's not perfect. You can see that some of these are, are off a bit, um, but for the most part, it works pretty good. Okay, and obviously we want to time. Right there, uh, we want to time this stuff up so that it lines up correctly. So I can just take this and just scoot it down. And by scooting that down, it'll adjust when that comes in. Uh, unless in my lens comp edit here, oh, because I drug the lens comp edit, not the lens comp. This is the cool thing about it too. If I drug the wrong thing on here, I can just Alt drag that new one on. And everything will update. There it goes. Okay, very cool. All right, so now I'll just write this out. Um, I did create a little bit different design. I actually went through and found some uh, correct wording for some of these things. Um, so this is the blue Jedi as the guardian. The concentration lens is the focus blade, and then the Jedi class uh, lightsaber is what this whole thing is. And I forget what I put here: diatanium power cell, something like that. All right, so then I would just render that out, and then that would be the uh, assignment. Okay. Uh, now, like I said, the assignment is the nuke part. You know, that's as far as you need to go, but you know, you can tell this definitely looks much nicer afterwards. Okay, and I've even added another vignette inside here. Um, which kind of seals the deal even further 
making it look even fancier than it did before. Okay, so we're just coming to After Effects, export the movie, and so on. All right, so that's your instructional video. Um, it is a bit confusing going back and forth between Maya and Mari and Nuke and Maya and After Effects and Maya and all these programs, but it's just a matter of time uh, before you get comfortable with doing that kind of stuff. All right? So uh, it's definitely something that's very cool and useful. Uh, lots of companies want this kind of stuff, um, you know, be able to call out certain things. And this is a great way to be able to do that without having to get any uh, third or fourth party programs.